had never heard of Don Bowles. He had been followed, his phone had been tapped, he had been denounced. His personal records, including his bank records, were illegal take, illegally taken and scrutinized to frame him. I got a pair of scissors. I cut out Bull's picture. I taped it to the wall. I knew, in that instant, what I would do with my writing and with my life. It's important to study history so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. And uh, it's also very fascinating to, to figure out where are the, what are the roots of the things that we do now? Where are the habits and the customs that we have with us? Where did they come from? And to, to get a sense of where, where they came from, who made them, what we are in some sense reenacting without knowing it can really be a very interesting process. Don Bowles is a 47-year-old investigative reporter for the Arizona Republic. He's been working on a series about the Mafia. Today, as he attempted to start his car, a bomb went off. The night Bowles is in critical condition, fighting for his life. Before he lapsed into unconsciousness, he blamed the Mafia and named a suspect. Don Bowles, an investigative reporter for the Phoenix, for the Arizona Star in Phoenix, is lying in a hospital in critical condition today. A bomb went off in his car yesterday as he sat in it outside a hotel where he was to have met a man who had some information for him. The car was damaged and Bowles lost a leg. Hospital attendants who picked up Bowles said he told them he was working on a story concerning the Mafia. Apparently, Bowles was working on a story involving several dog tracks in Arizona. Come on, ask for a reprial. House Republican leader John Rhodes of Arizona today called for a federal investigation of the death of Arizona newspaper reporter Don Bowles. Bowles died yesterday from injuries he suffered while investigating the Mafia. Bill Redeker has a report. His doctor said he had never seen a more heroic fight for life. But after 11 days of hospitalization during which both legs and an arm had to be amputated, Don Bowles died. June 2nd, he had gone to a hotel to meet an informant, a meeting that didn't take place. It was a setup. And when Bowles returned to his car, a remote-controlled bomb exploded under the driver's seat. To the first help on the scene, Bowles mentioned three things. The Mafia, a company suspected of land fraud, and John Adamson. Adamson, known principally for racetrack connections, was taken in for questioning. Shortly after Bowles' death Sunday, Adamson was charged with murder. Police say that is just the beginning of an investigation that could have broad implications, both for organized crime and politicians involved in land deals. The Arizona Republic had assigned Bowles to the state legislative beat after his research on organized crime had made him the most celebrated investigative reporter in the state. It had also made him a target. It's sharpened our teeth, that's what it's done. And this is probably the uh, worst mistake that these people made, in that uh, they thought they could silence one man, and they have silenced one man, but they can't silence the entire news media. And uh, all they have achieved is to bring more heat upon themselves. Don Bowles will be difficult to replace in this newsroom, but if his death was meant to scare off other reporters, it has backfired. And now a lot of his colleagues say they are determined to pick up where he left off. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Phoenix. Don Bowles was a reporter in Arizona for the Arizona Republic and the Phoenix Gazette. He had been working on a series of newspaper reports about swindles in the sale of land and other rackets. Two weeks ago, he got into his car, started it, and a bomb planted in it blew up. He was severely wounded. Yesterday, he died. A report from Rick Davis in Phoenix. The governor of Arizona ordered the flags at the state capitol flown at half-staff in honor of a man much respected in this state. Don Bowles was an investigative reporter for the Arizona Republic. He would follow every lead in search of a story. His managing editor says he was doing that kind of digging the day a bomb exploded beneath his car. He got a tip uh, on some information on a land fraud case. And being a longtime investigative reporter, he decided to check it out. Uh, it's quite obvious now that that tip was a setup. Uh, but he was given some information which tended to involve uh, uh, some Arizona officials. 
in uh, a land fraud case. When he went to meet his informant, the bomb exploded. Bowles lost an arm, both legs, and 11 days later he died. But on that day, when ambulance attendants pulled him from the car, he spoke one name. He said, John Adamson. John Adamson was the man. Find him. Adamson was first booked on a fraud charge. Yesterday, he was charged with the murder of Don Bowles. Adamson owns racing dogs and is an alleged associate of gamblers. Bowles told a fellow reporter Adamson was the informant who said he had information linking Senator Barry Goldwater and Representative Sam Steiger to a land fraud scheme. Bowles told associates he doubted the story but had to check it out. His newspaper has made a front page promise not to forget Don Bowles. Under the story telling of his death, an editorial is bannered in red. It says, that death shall not go unavenged. It concludes, we could not rest if Don Bowles had died utterly in vain. Rick Davis, NBC News, Phoenix. Don Bowles, a Phoenix reporter who was murdered while trying to expose crooked land sales, was buried today. Sharon Lovejoy reports. For years, Don Bowles had worked as an investigative reporter for the Arizona Republic. He had won awards for his stories on government corruption, mafia infiltration of racetracks, of land fraud involving organized crime. The people here say that is why he was killed. He may have known too much. Bowles had given up investigative reporting eight months ago, saying the work was too frustrating. There had been threats on his life. But a telephone call lured him here to the Hotel Clarendon June 2nd. An informant had promised to meet him here with information he claimed linked Senator Barry Goldwater and Congressman Sam Steiger to an Arizona land fraud scheme. But the man never arrived. And when Bowles started to drive out of the hotel parking lot, his car exploded. Critically injured, Bowles gasped four words to bystanders. Mafia, Emprise, the name of a New York sports concessionaire which once owned a piece of six dog racing tracks here, and John Adamson, the man Bowles later identified from a hospital bed as his informant. When Bowles died Sunday afternoon after the amputation of both legs and one arm, Adamson was charged with his murder. Phoenix police know Adamson well. He's a man with a criminal record, and police say he has underworld associates. He's a gambler and breeder of racing dogs, friendly with Ned Warren, an Arizona real estate magnate who has been under investigation here for land fraud. Both M. Prize and Ned Warren have been under close scrutiny by grand juries. It was M. Prize money which bailed out an Arizona firm controlling six dog racing tracks. And in 1972, M. Prize was convicted of conspiring to hide ties to underworld gambling interests in Nevada. Warren's name has been linked with organized crime for years. Edward Lazar, president of several of Warren's real estate companies, was gunned down last year, one day before he was to testify to a grand jury investigating his boss. And it was at Warren's request, say some sources, that Senator Barry Goldwater and Congressman Sam Steiger wrote letters back in 1971 endorsing the sale of nearly worthless Arizona land to U.S. servicemen. The scheme was later found to be illegal. Both Arizona Republicans say they had no idea the land deal wasn't legitimate. Police say there will be more arrests in the Bowles murder case and more grand jury investigations into organized crime in Arizona. Sharon Lovejoy, CBS News, Phoenix. That's the news this Wednesday night. When a Phoenix newsman, Don Bowles, was murdered last summer while investigating a land fraud scandal, reporters from across the country went to that state to conduct their own investigation of scandals in Arizona. And now telling their story, Sharon Lovejoy has the tale. Among the many findings to be revealed by the investigative team during the next several weeks are white collar swindlers bribing their way to freedom. In nationwide radio broadcasts and in more than 20 newspapers across the country, the Arizona story began to unfold this morning. A story of crime in that state, put together by a team of 39 journalists from 26 different news organizations. It was the murder of a reporter that sparked this experiment in teen journalism. Last June, Arizona Republic reporter Don Bowles was lured to a Phoenix hotel on the promise of information linking Arizona politicians and others to land fraud schemes. The informant never appeared, and when Bowles returned to start his car, a bomb went off. Twelve days later, Don Bowles was dead. 
Arizona then became the target of a group known as Investigative Reporters and Editors Incorporated, a group founded after the Watergate scandal and to which Bowles himself had belonged. The team promised to carry on the work of Don Bowles, leaving his murder for the police to solve. The reporters were led by an editor from Long Island's Newsday, Robert Green, who described some of the team's findings to CBS News reporter Sam Chu Lin. We have been able to demonstrate uh, that Arizona is facing a massive problem with organized crime. We have been able to document who those people are and what they are doing. Uh, that uh, the state is not geared as it stands to handle this problem alone. Apparently, it didn't take the reporter's team long to conclude what Don Bowles had written for years, that Arizona has a serious problem with white-collar crime. The team's report today says Arizona's prosecutorial system has been, quote, marked until recently by incompetence, fuzzy or non-existent law, and brazen bribe-taking, unquote. In addition, the team calls Arizona, which borders on Mexico, quote, the single most concentrated corridor of illegal narcotics entry into the United States, unquote. Whatever new leads are produced by the Arizona series will become apparent as the stories unfold over the next 23 days. There have been threats of lawsuits, and many of the newspapers running the series are nervous. Bold's own paper, the Arizona Republic, plans to carry only part of the series, and that after extensive editing. Tucson's Arizona Daily Star says it will run the whole series, but again, only after editing. In the end, will very much change in Arizona as a result of this six-month investigative reporting effort? Robert Green answers that question with one of his own. When you tell the people what is going on, then should something happen like it does in the fairy tale books, that immediately there's an indictment, immediately there's a conviction, everybody says, you're right, I'm guilty, send me to jail. Uh, the problem with investigative reporting is it doesn't happen that way. Sharon Lovejoy, CBS News, Los Angeles. Last June 2nd, Don Bowles, an investigative reporter for an Arizona newspaper, was fatally injured when a bomb exploded in his car in Phoenix. Bowles has been checking into alleged links between public figures and organized crime in Arizona. As a result of the Bowles murder, more than two dozen newsmen from across the nation converged on Arizona to investigate corruption there. This week, that independent task force of newsmen begins publishing its report on the circumstances in Arizona business and politics that led to the Bowles slaying. It will be a 23-part series that names and cites incidents to support a theory that Arizona is ruled by a combination of mobsters and highly visible pillars of the community. The leader of the reporter team is Bob Green of Long Island's Newsday. He told ABC's Bill Redeker that arrogance is the attitude that led to Bull's death. Today's copyrighted article from the reporting task force charges that Arizona Republican Senator Barry Goldwater, his brother Robert, and other political and business figures in Arizona had personal and business contacts with alleged organized crime figures. The Arizona Republic and the Phoenix Gazette have decided to publish only those portions of the report that they can document satisfactorily. We talked ourselves this afternoon with Senator Goldwater, who had been named in that report, and he said that some of the statements are true, but that they have been distorted by innuendo. The senator said that he had taken campaign money from a man he knew as Bill Nelson, and only after the election found out that the man's real name was Willie Beoff, the rackets figure, and this was one of the things that came out in the report. Senator Goldwater continued, newspapers carrying these stories are taking one hell of a risk. He said there's a good chance I'll file a collective libel suit. I'm not ashamed of one damn thing I did, he said, and I'm not going to stand by while my family, which has been in the state for 160 years, is besmirched. I am Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, to is to serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS 4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible. One-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories.
without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 The other thing everyone's doing these days, uh, by which I mean a couple of years ago, is to get money through crowdfunding. You ever thought about that? Yes, but what is it? Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life. Something simple. You can help a man get back on his feet. Dad, what are you recording? Oh, Lisa, turn the camera and quickly say please give. Please.